Hey man, what's up? Have you ever heard of Jack Parsons? Jack Jack Parsons Parsons. I Jack thought you said Parsons. Parsons. Jack Parsons. Jack Parsons. You also, uh, might know him as John Whiteside Parsons. What? Or you could also know him as Marvel Whiteside Parsons. Okay, <laughs> hold on. Jack Parsons. Yes. John Whiteside Parsons. Yes. Marvel Marvel Whiteside Parsons. Yes. Um, I guess not. <laughs> is he from that Christmas song? What the and pretend that he is Jack Parsons. <laughs> Sorry and pretend that he is Melv Melvin? Marvel Marvel Mar and pretend that he is Marvel Whiteside Parsons. It doesn't fit Jack Parsons Marvel. did though. Yeah, Parson yeah. Brown. Parson Brown. Yeah. Well, no. Um, he's not. He's not. That's not him. Okay. Who um, is Jack Parsons? Jack Parsons uh, was born Marvel Whiteside Parsons, named after his dad, Marvel, Marvel. Parsons. <laughs> <laughs> is his middle name Whiteside or is that a nickname? Uh, that's his middle name, I believe. His middle no, name his, is Whiteside. No, that's his. That's his mother's last name. Um, his mother's last oh. name is Whiteside. His dad's last name is Parsons. They were married, but they split up. Where'd that last and name it wasn't come great. from? Um, so he he when his parents split up, he was like, "Well, I'm both." Um, yeah. So he hyphenated, hyphenated it. it. Yeah. yeah. He's like, "We's like, I'll, Dad, I'll hyphenate." And he's like, "I don't think people." What's your opinion on uh, do that? on that? Like when couples. Why do, do you that? ask? Is there a reason? No, I have. Have we had that conversation before? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> have we talked about it on the podcast? I don't know. I don't know. I just I I, I can't explain why I don't like it. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, like I, mean, I just I, I just know that I don't why you why someone would want to. I don't I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I understand it, I, but I, I, yeah, I would yeah. never do it. Anyway, I've been thinking about changing my last name to Whiteside. <laughs> Whiteside Myers, Jared Whiteside Myers. Yeah, my last name. Marvel. Whiteside I was said Myers. I was going to change my last name to Whiteside, and Marvel you were like Whiteside, Whiteside Myers. Myers. <laughs> yeah, the website's <laughs> probably available. <laughs> Dot com. MarvelWhitesideMyers.com. That's like that church last week that uh, put nope, on yep. the, they put on the screen Jaron Myers, but they spelled it M E Y E R S dot com, mm. and uh, which is fine because I own that one. Yep. So, yeah. <clears throat> uh, Marvel Whiteside Myers is uh, not a live site; it is available. Oh, I thought you were going to say exactly not available. Match. I was like, what are you talking exactly. about? Who? Ten bucks a year. I'm just dreaming about your dad. Oh, yeah. It's an act of terrorism, son. I heard there were third graders down there. <laughs> it's got to be because of the liberal agenda. <laughs> All rise for the Lord of the Universe. Not allowed to do anything with blood anymore. Things I learned last night. Bro. And Satan. <laughs> Okay, so old Marvel was born when? Uh, 1914. Uh, oh, Marvel. it's an old guy. Yeah, and the, the, the marriage didn't really end great, and so the mo- his mom didn't want him to continue to be Marvel because he was named after his, his dad. Yeah. And so she changed it to John, and he started going by Jack. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she started dating a new guy named John. <laughs> And she's like, now your name is John. A few years later, she started dating the guy. And she's like, Jack. Uh, now it's Jack. Your name is whoever I'm dating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? That would be traumatic if your mom kept doing that to you. You know. You know my. <clears throat> I don't know if we talked about this before on the podcast. You know the story that my dad's. My dad is the one who changed his last name. Yeah. Yeah. I do know. Uh, that. Yeah, because it used to be Horsey. Um, don't. He lie. hyphenated though, didn't he? No, he did not. I swear, I've seen like somewhere where they'll say. Horsey Myers. No, I swear you've I made that. that. You dreamed it. <laughs> Maybe you I having dreams that. about my dad. <laughs> I do dream about your dad pretty often. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just dreaming about your dad. <laughs> oh yeah. Just, oh, <laughs> sorry. I was having a having a dream about your dad. What? <laughs> Don't do that. Uh, so well, he's a Patreon supporter. Uh, we dream about all our Patreon supporters. <laughs> Support us on Patreon and meet us in our dreams. <laughs> Virtual events are a thing of the past. 
<laughs> the future is is dream dances. All right. And so uh, anyway, that was weird. My dad's last name. He changed his last name when he when he got he married to my mom. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And he took her last name. They didn't make one up together. Yeah, but they thought about changing my last name to his. There was that was a conversation. I oh, could have been Jaron Horsey. Was the point of that story? That would have been better for comedy. You would have been a puppeteer. That's another. That's a puppeteer. <laughs> that would have been a puppeteer. Yeah, you would have been. A puppeteer. Do you mean a ventriloquist? No, I mean a puppeteer. I oh, mean... I wouldn't have been good at the mouth. I would have had to hide behind the curtain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the difference between a puppeteer and a, and a ventriloquist is talent. Is the curtain and. Uh, <laughs> Because <laughs> it's, it's that blue felt curtain. That's this the is way off track. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. So, so Jack, Jack Parsons. Parsons. Jack, I hope that this is an alien thing. Um, Jack Parsons. Uh, he is kind of like the father, uh, the unknown. We'll call him the unknown father of rocketry. Um, of what? Rocketry. Yeah. I mean, saying the word again is not going to help me. Rocketry is when you. Build trees out of rocks. Shut up. <laughs> Just get to the story, please. <laughs> you know, I'm like going to be like our YouTube comments like right now. Designers. Just tell the story. Like rocket designers. Oh, a rocketeer. <laughs> he's, but he's he's unknown because he kind of got uh, designing rockets. He got blacklisted, and so we'll get we'll get to that. Okay. Um, but in in 1914, he was born, uh, and to a pretty wealthy family. Uh, his grandfather was very 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 wealthy, yeah. uh, and so they enrolled Mr. him in this Whiteside? private school. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Whiteside, Mr. Brightside. Uh, so they enrolled him in this really uh, like affluent school where he yeah. didn't love his education, but he loved sci-fi. So he read all these sci-fi books all the time, and he started to dream of going to space. And so as a child, he became like obsessed with, is this possible? And a common trope in sci-fi was um, figuring out ways to make rockets go to space because there was like. I mean, fireworks had been a thing for a long time, so there was like really uh, rudimentary, like tiny little like home rockets basically were a thing. But they didn't do anything. Say home rockets. Yeah, you got a home rocket. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a, everybody's got a, everybody needs a home mortgage and a home rocket. Yeah, so, uh, and a rocket mortgage <laughs> today's <laughs> sponsor. <laughs> I was just smooth. They're not. We need to bleep it out unless we can get them. No, so I'll call them. Bleep it out unless we get them. <laughs> don't bleep it. Here's the problem: is that you keep saying bleep stuff, and I watch it back, and I don't remember that we bleeped it. You and keep so, saying bleep stuff to stuff I say. That's true, but I'm saying like we should have <laughs> a warning in the beginning. That's like, hey, when we bleep warning, stuff, we're not actually cussing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. We have to have a disclaimer that we're not explicit. You know what I'm saying? Just so you know. Hey, just so you guys know, just this so is a family know. friendly thing. Yeah, if we bleep something, it's a joke. Um, anyways, so uh, he he became obsessed with trying to uh, wanting to make go to rockets space and make rockets. So he started um, uh, just he's making trying to ride explosives. bottle rockets in the air. Yeah, he's just making explosives at home, uh, and there was a description of him of his neighborhood like his family home as a child. The backyard was described as having craters like the moon um, because he was just blowing stuff up in his backyard all the time. That's what rich people do though. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can tell when they're when they're rich because either the yard looks impeccable immaculate. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. or like total garbage. I mean, they are no care. Yeah, because yeah. they have so much money that it's like, oh, what land, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they don't respect land. But- I don't need to respect land. Yeah. I'm too rich for land. It's respect. only on this part that we own, not on <laughs> the other parts. So he uh, uh, he was getting bullied in middle school uh, because he liked sci-fi too much, and um, I don't know stuff that kids bully each other for. Yeah, um, think it, anime kids now. <laughs> you know that, but 1920s version. <laughs> and so, uh, an eighth grader. Or he's stuck just like, up one day him. we're gonna go to the moon, and everyone's like, <laughs> "Shut up, nerd." <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's. I mean, I was I wasn't making a joke. You're not that far off. Uh, so, uh, uh, anyway, so he 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 got made fun of a lot through middle school. Made good friends with an eighth grader who also was into blowing stuff up, and so they just started blowing stuff up together, right? As kids, yeah. just the little bomb bros, right? <laughs> um, and uh, but then the Great Depression hits, and his grandparents lose their fortune. Um, and so then he kind of just runs they lost their whole fortune in the Great Depression. Yeah, and so they had to move they're across like, town. They're like, hey, uh, Marvel John Jack, 
how are we supposed to sell this house <laughs> with all these holes in the backyard? Mm-hmm, Why don't mm-hmm. you go fill those in? Yeah. He's like, sorry, I was trying to dig a hole so I could scare some third graders. <laughs> <laughs> I heard there were third graders down there. <laughs> You dig deeper now. <laughs> you go far enough, you'll find him. Um, and so, uh, but even even though he moved schools and uh, moved neighborhoods, he he stayed Edward Foreman. So was now they're the poor. name of that eighth grader. Yeah. Um, so well, like and, definition poor or like just everyone's poor, so it doesn't matter. I mean, yes. Okay. Like I mean, everyone was poor then, but yeah. Like I don't I don't know what you're trying. But were they still doing better than other people? Is what I mean. I don't know the answer to that. Okay, I don't know, but um, but anyways, he, he's remained friends with Edward Foreman, which was that eighth grader who stuck up for him. Okay, and they just blew stuff up all the time, right? That was like their number one hobby. Um, but uh, they they switch schools. He goes to high school, and he's just not like applying himself in school. Yeah. Um, his parents think he's pretty intelligent, but he's just not trying. And so his mom, in an effort to try <laughs> to try to get him to like put the work in, right? Uh, she enrolls him in military school and so ships him off to military school. Always the answer. Always the answer. Just get him out of the house. Yeah, uh, let him live with some. Yeah, well, you don't like it here. How about the service? (laughs) Yeah, how about that? (laughs) So he goes uh, he got kicked out uh, because (laughs) because he blew up a toilet. Like literally put a bomb in the toilet and blew yeah, it. Yeah, no, I figured that part. I didn't think that you meant that he just really was stinking up the bathroom. I think you I thought you meant you didn't have to clarify that. Yeah, I as soon as you said it, I was like, Oh yeah, he physically blew up a toilet. Not Jack, we have the discussion. <laughs> you're gonna, what do you get discharged from the military? <laughs> Cause you're making too much of a mess in the bathroom, dude. Yeah, Jack, you're not reacting well to the military food. Yeah, there's not a place for you. Here. Yeah, you're not acting. You know, <laughs> your body is not taking the military very well, and so uh, you say mil- military, M- military. What? <laughs> so anyway, he f- he blew up a toilet. Day one, how long did no, he wait? He was there for a little bit, but okay, he gets kicked out. Um, and That's where they draw the line. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> you blew up a toilet, you're out. Here. You got It's an act of terrorism, son. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. So there's there's that. So after after uh, now, what year are we in? Uh, nineteen twenty something. Twenty nine, thirty. I don't know. Twenty nine ish ish. Um, He'd be fifteen years old. He wasn't in the military. He was in military school. Military school. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so he really wanted to go to Caltech because that's where everyone was learning like sure. really cool rockets I- aerospace engineering stuff. Yeah. Um, him and his friend uh, uh, what Edward was his name? Foreman. Foreman Edward Foreman. They both really wanted to go, um, uh, but they weren't getting accepted They were because they didn't try in school. All they did was just blow stuff up for fun. Yeah, um, and they're like we can do all like, the maybe stuff. Maybe if we do. go to the school and we blow up all the toilets. <laughs> They'll know that we're good at this. <laughs> we like look at all the toilets they blew up. Like maybe it's one of those things where they'll be right. like, "That's really annoying," but also, but also, you're pretty good How'd at you this. Guys do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, Goodwill Hunting, uh, but they're just you know they take the janitor job and they're just blowing up toilets. <laughs> so, so what they did is they just befriended some kids who went to Caltech, um, and they got really close to them. And then they were like, "Hey." We're gonna live in your dorm room. They were like, "Hey, you guys want to blow stuff up with us?" Uh, and so they just okay. started blowing stuff up with these Caltech kids. And these uh, these kids had a close relationship with one of uh, uh, the professors there, and they were able to get this. Um, I don't know what the word is for it. Basically, get permission to use an old academic building that had a laboratory in it, but had been kind of inactive since the depression. Okay, and so they were like, yeah, no one's using that. You guys can just use that whenever you want. And so the students got permission and the students were like, hey, like you're our blow stuff up buddies. Like you want to (laughs) come with us to blow stuff up in this unused lab. And so (laughs) you're our blow stuff up buddies. They actually did have a name on campus, um, which I really tried to figure out if this is where this name came from. I believe it is, but I don't have any way to prove it. But the kids on campus called this group of kids who blew stuff up. They called them the Suicide Squad, um, and I am convinced that's where they got the name really? for, that, for the comic books. Because this was before mm. DC. Um, I heard they were called something different. 
What? X Men. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Whoa! Look at the. Are those the Avengers? Is that Marvel? Mar. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. That's right. That's when new episodes drop on Patreon. <laughs> Patreon's a way to get early access to episodes and other content and exclusive merchandise. And we're not going to stop there because we got a private Discord with our hosts and producers in it for less than 17 cents a day. That's right. That's $5 a month. You too can be a Patreon supporter and not hear advertisements in this freaking podcast anymore. Text Till into 66866. Otherwise, I'll come to your house. I will find you. I will destroy everything that's good in your life until we're the only thing left. Anyway, here's another advertisement. So, uh, yeah, they call them the Suicide Squad because, I mean, they repetitively came really close to killing themselves doing this. For sure. Um, and eventually, they outgrew uh, this little lab. How? They, what do you mean they uh, outgrew They were it? making too big of explosions. And the teacher was like, you need to find a new The professor was like, this. guys, I said you could use this. I didn't say you could burn the building down. <laughs> He said, I didn't expect you to do this. And so uh, so they go out to uh, there was this dam um, out out in Pasadena. Uh, mm-hmm. And so they they call it uh, devil's den. I believe is what they call it. Let me double check that. Make sure I got and that so right. they're trying to blow up a dam. <laughs> they're like, <laughs> they're like what if the city? <laughs> what if? <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't let us tear down a building at Caltech. Let's <laughs> flood it. How about that? We'll show them. Uh, so Devil's Gate, Devil's Gate. So it's the damn okay. Devil's Gate, um, and uh, there was just this big open space by it because the, it, there used to be a big body of water there, and it like wasn't anymore because you know, <laughs> climate change. Because the dam. Because <laughs> the dam. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was climate change. <laughs> oh, you think so? It wasn't because of because the, they walled off the water. <laughs> so they went over. Well, there was. The I mean, there was. It's <laughs> next to that dam. And then there was like this big empty area that I don't know how the water is not there anymore. I literally can't put it together. I don't know where this thing. I don't. It just doesn't make sense. <laughs> so they it's got to be because of the liberal agenda. <laughs> 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 so, there, so there's a big open area that used to have water. Now it's dried up or whatever mm-hmm. for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Aliens probably, but most likely aliens. Uh, so they go over there. So the and suicide they were like, squad. Yeah, they go over there and they said, let's just blow up stuff bigger. And so they started making bigger and bigger bombs. And eventually this developed to they were they're were making rockets uh, that were like small time, like just like little you know, shoot up a little bit and come back down. Kind of like what SpaceX does all the time. They're like, look at it go up yeah. and it goes down. Uh, they're doing that type of stuff, um, and they actually started a group that what they called the Guggenheim Aeronautical Laboratory. Don't know where they got that name. Um, Gal, I think it was named after the lab that they got to use. I think the lab was the Guggenheim lab. Okay, at Caltech. Um, so they don't have any official training in this, though. They're still just befriending these college students. Well, the Caltech guys kind of do because they're going yeah, to yeah, school they're, for they're, that. But, but I'm talking like Jack Parsons and and Edward Foreman. Yeah, they just know some guys, and yeah. they, well, they've been doing it their whole life. Yeah, that's what <laughs> the question. They've a lot asked, of stuff though. up. <laughs> they don't have any formal training on this stuff, though. I mean, define formal. I mean, a oversight committee has approved the curriculum that they are learning. Yeah, and then they are. Uh, guided no. by a professional through what they're doing. Technically, the answer is no. Technically, no. Not even technically. No, it's like well, just straight up no. Uh, technically, no. Somehow, and I'm not. Uh, this is very gray. I don't understand how this happened. But somehow, during this time, when whenever they were still in the lab, um, somehow Parsons got in touch with Werner von Braun. I don't know. You know who that is? That sounds familiar. Uh, he is the guy who is who is the father of rocketry. Um, and so but he, Jack Parsons is the secret one. He's kind of the, yeah, the behind Kay. behind the scenes. So uh, what Werner von Braun did he was so he was a Nazi um, after the war. He was one of the ones that we were like, hey, let's just pretend. Yeah, let's yeah. just pretend you didn't do any of that. Yeah. And then he hey, came forget over Forget everything you did before. Yeah, and he built the rockets that took us to the moon. Um, and so he is the guy that like everyone's like, yeah, he did it. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, he did that and nothing else. Yeah, there's nothing else he did that was pretty bad. Yeah, why wow, there's there's a pretty big like paperclip imprint mm-hmm. on his file here. No, it's not. Ah, uh, you're just seeing things, man. 
Yeah, I that's because you stared at the rocket too long. Yeah. Were you dreaming about my dad last night? <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing my dad would Did say. Did you have a dad dream? <laughs> Did you have a dad dream last night? <laughs> you got to cut uh, it out. And so he became like, I, I wanted to say like friends, but almost like colleagues. Like they would call each other. Just around. Like, <laughs> like. Like long distance calls, like this is this is pre war, and so he's like long distance calls. Oh yeah, this is before all this stuff. Werner von Braun to just talk about rockets, and so they're kind of like oh, exchanging Braun? ideas. Like, Yeesh. <laughs> yeah, and they uh, would yak. <laughs> I don't know. Can they say J's? I don't know. I don't know. I think I don't think Germans can. I don't know. Uh, can they say J's? <laughs> yeah. Question. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they would just call and yeah, chat about James. blowing stuff up. <laughs> They'd be like, "Hey, well, if you uh, thought, think about blowing something up like this, like would, you, would that work?" And then he'd He's be like, like just, I don't yeah, know. "Just want to run by something, <laughs> something real quick. If I were to, and this is all hypothetical. Uh, <laughs> if I were to, you know, put these two things together, would that go from, or would that go who? If I were to, I don't know, rig a bunch of explosives on the Pasadena Dam." Would it flood the entire city? Or? I just want to take out Caltech. <laughs> uh, I mean, I <laughs> and that one military school. <laughs> Believe one toilet as my as my calls as my like the replacement <laughs> toilet. <laughs> what, do, what do you call that? Your uh, your um, your call sign. Is I it your call sign? I think you had it right. No call sign it's is calling like, card. Like trucker trucker. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's yeah, your yeah, call yeah. sign. It's calling card. Calling, calling card. card. Yeah, I think yeah. that's it. Um. Yeah, if you show up to an arson and there's one untouched toilet, mm -hmm. this was this guy. It was this guy. So, so here's the thing about if you're blowing a bunch of stuff up in the desert, yeah, um, the government notices. No, they don't. Uh, yeah, How? they noticed. They noticed. Um, How? And they said, "Hey, we noticed your." <laughs> this is hi. This, this is, is the government. <laughs> <laughs> we were listening in on your phone call with. I mean, we were just. <laughs> We <laughs> were just perusing the <laughs> desert. We talking about. They found out. Yeah, so they were like, "Hey, we couldn't help but notice the rockets you guys are building in the desert. What if you just did that for us?" And no joke, they took the Suicide Squad and they started the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, which was the group that became NASA. <laughs> and they said, "Hey, what if you guys just made rockets for us?" And so this is where, this is really where NASA came from. Is a group of kids blowing crap up. In no, school. Yeah. I refuse. This is really where where it all began, uh, and so these guys got stupid rich. Like they were making giant rockets for the government, and the government was like, "Hey, government, them. if you're listening to this <laughs> and you're like, well, the government could use a podcast." Um, we've been yeah, making this podcast. We, we've in been the making desert. this podcast in the <laughs> desert, and uh, I don't know if I'm. It, it kind of like, blew up last year. It seems like you could help but notice, <laughs> <laughs> and I was just wondering if you would. Notice us more. Yeah, what do we have to make it? I couldn't help. It's yeah, couldn't yeah. Help. What do we got to do to move this? Anyway, uh, anyway they so, so they just like basically were like, hey, that feels on brand for the government, though. <laughs> that feels like they're just like, yeah, we like what you're doing. Um, and like they have to have a meeting where they're like, do we shut this down or do we like pay for it? Those are the only two <laughs> options. Do we shut it down or do we give them money? Uh, yeah, yeah. Or do we like? Perpetuate it. Like, yeah. what, what do we want to do here? We're not. We don't like it. Yeah, but if it was ours, we would kind of like it. Can you guys do that? You can't. No. Okay. Great. Hire, hire him. him. Is he fourteen? He's fourteen years old. 14. Hire him. Hire him. Hire him. So uh, they no get, bathroom access. <laughs> yeah. Keep away from all the toilets. <laughs> Heard that was a problem for him. No. No bathrooms in the office. Uh, so so they hire them. Go in the field. And uh, they make a ton of money. All of them yeah. get super rich. So Jack goes and buys himself a ma mansion, and he nicknames it the Parsonage. You, <laughs> I hate that. Whatever. <laughs> you like it. You're like, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Why I is your house so not called much. Stonehenge? Oh, Are you it gonna is call now. Your it is now. It is now. There you go. <laughs> um. So. He starts making a bunch of rockets and stuff. Uh, was kind of leading the forefront of. Making rockets for the U.S. like him and yeah, his I mean, there's group. no competition. There's no yeah. one to compare it to. Yeah, and so uh, I mean, he was definitely in the group that was involved in getting rockets off the ground. Yeah, literally. Um, they also they also made rocket propelled aircraft, uh, which was a huge impact for aircraft carriers. 
because then it was safe to take off from an aircraft carrier. Yeah, so they did a lot of stuff that got them very, very rich um, and then and then because they used to have to <laughs> slingshot them. Yeah, they did actually. Yeah, and uh, and then uh, Jack got weird. Um, he was always kind of weird. Um, <laughs> Don't go where I think you're going. Where do you think I'm going? I think you know where I think you're going. Where do you think I'm going? I think you know where I think you <laughs> think you know where you're. Do you think? You think going. Do you think that I'm I going? think you started a story about a kid who was really into sci-fi, all right? And then he's like blowing stuff up and making rockets, and then he gets hired by the government, and he's working with a Nazi who isn't a Nazi yet, but will be in the future, and then he'll be an American. And then I think you're going to pivot at the end and be like, by the way, Jack really believes in aliens. No, not even close. So when Jack was in middle school, he wanted so bad to get to space um, that uh, he so so backpedal a little bit. Okay, Jack's family's Baptist. Very, very <laughs> Baptist, um, very heavily Baptist. Okay, um, like so Baptist. Um, I keep waiting for you to drop aliens and you drop <laughs> Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> Very Baptist uh, and, and honestly Jack was not having it. He was not. Yeah. He did not want to be Baptist. He didn't want to be Christian. Um, he didn't want to be involved in any of it. Okay, um, but he was like kind of still religious <laughs> and which is weird because um, he like the reason he didn't want to do any of the like church stuff was because he didn't buy it. He didn't believe it. Okay, but at the same time he still had a religious like twang to him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a twang <laughs> like he had a, a religious accent. Hey, what's that accent? Hmm. Oh, it's uh, it's a little Lutheran I'm picking up notes of religion. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so when he's in middle school, he's like, he's like, man, I want to go to space so bad. And he's like trying God, to like, would you please beam me up? No, he says Satan. <laughs> would you please take me to space. So he like holds like a like a seance and basically sells his soul to the devil so he could go to space <laughs> as a middle schooler. That is just <laughs> not the direction I thought we were going. He's like, okay, he's like, he's like, if you get me to space, then I'm yours for all eternity devil. <laughs> Are you joking? No, and the road. So wait, 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 wait. So Jack Parsons <laughs> is just like he's a middle schooler, <laughs> a little seventh grade twerp, right? And he's just in there doing algebra, just you know, x equals seven, y equals, and then he just goes, hmm. <laughs> Devil, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm sure he lit some candles. I want to go first. to space. So do you think he tried God first? That's my question. <laughs> do you think he tried God? <laughs> And then was like covering his bases <laughs> and was like, God, God please give me the space. Me space. Devil. <laughs> what if of you? God can't do it? <laughs> I want you to do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so he, he I'm processing this. I'm sorry. Yeah. I he, okay. He, and did he hold to this his whole life? Like he's out, he gets signed with NASA. Signed with NASA. What is he, an NBA player? <laughs> Signs. He's like, he's like, I can't sign that. I've already. I'm on oh, under contract. No, no, no. Sorry. With yeah, the Lord my, of the uh, world. Oh, this one's just in ink. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> not allowed to do anything with blood anymore. Yeah. Did that once when I was 11. Yeah. <laughs> you signing a blood oath? <laughs> Did he write out the full Marvel <laughs> white Marvel side white Parsons side. and then passes out? That's so much blood. <laughs> He's like, do you want my birth name or do you want Can my I write JP? <laughs> He's like, do, do you need my birth dad or my stepdad or my second stepdad's name? Like, which one do I need to use? <laughs> I'm stressed. So yeah, did so he go to space? Wait till you hear where this goes. Uh, so <laughs> he's like, I want to go so far up that I go down for eternity. I'm so stressed. So he gets rich, right? Obviously, he gets rich. Everyone, every Satan worshiper does. <laughs> <laughs> he made a literal deal with the devil. I can't get past it. I'm sorry. Okay. So he gets rich, and you'll you'll never guess who he befriends. The devil, I guess. <laughs> what are you talking about? Who? Alistair Crowley. 
Uh, and so he joins. If you don't know who Alistair Crowley is. We did an episode about him, and uh, he's a cult leader, basically. Yeah, yep, yep. Um, also, we've mentioned Operation Paperclip. We've also done an episode about that. You can go back and listen to it. So yeah. they're alive at the same time. Yep, they're alive at the same time. Uh, and Alistair Crowley is Crowley is running his cult. Yeah, uh, Thelma. Um, and yeah, yeah, out in the desert. Yeah, and he he calls himself the beast. And Alistair, Alistair goes. Crowley. Hey, I couldn't help but notice. <laughs> You sold your soul to me. To me. Ten years ago, when you were a child, still a child. Holding up the deed, <laughs> deed to your like, soul. Just a piece of paper. I got your soul mortgage. He's like, uh, Thirty-year note. He's like, I'm the devil. And it's like, I don't know if I believe that. If I wasn't the devil, would I have this? <laughs> Do you remember? Do you remember Marvel Jack John? <laughs> <laughs> do you remember when you signed this to me? Because I remember. I'll never forget. But yeah. do you remember who you tried to go to first? Because <laughs> I also remember. And you're like, oh man. Uh, yeah. So him and him and Alistair become pretty good friends, um, and he joins Thelma, and he actually becomes one of their priests, and so he gets his own order started. Um, and a little bit uh, disclaimer: this is graphic. If you're watching with your children's, a little recap on Thelma. One of the big like yeah. tenants in Thelema was they called it sex magic. And so right. what they believed was um, if you manifest your dreams during sex, then they will come true. And so these people just they did it a lot and thought about what they wanted whenever they did. Um, and so he did that um, and his wife was not a fan. So his wife left him. He was married before this, by the way. Oh yeah, good, good note. <laughs> yeah, sure. So his wife was like, "Hey, not a fan of this thing that you're doing right now." And he's like, "Yeah." By the way, <laughs> what would you do if your spouse joined a cult? Yeah, what would you do if you married someone and then years into it, they're like, "By the That's way, what I'm saying. when yeah, I like, was 11." What? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, I know that I should have brought this up earlier. Um, I do love you with my whole heart, yeah, and I can't love you with my whole soul because yeah. part of it belongs to Satan, it's the devil, and you. You know how like you're always like, man, we're gonna spend eternity together, and I'm like, yeah, uh, I don't know. That's well, not, I mean, like we could. I've yeah. got my spot secured. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you could just do some bad stuff. Well, I'm saying like, <laughs> okay, but imagine that you get married, right? And a couple years into yeah, your marriage, yeah, yeah. your spouse joins a cult. Yeah. What yeah. do you do? Um, I mean, I feel like you would try to get them out of it for a while. I, I feel like you would exhaust all. Options. I think if Bree joined a cult, you would join it. <laughs> but if you join a cult, she would fight to get you out. Um, I mean, it depends how convincing the cult is. That's that's. I guess that's fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so he gets he he dives into this, and his wife is not a fan. Yeah, uh, she's like, I don't like that, and so she leaves him. Uh, but luckily for Jack, and pretty unlucky for his sister. Or his his oh. wife for his <laughs> wife. <laughs> okay, I was like, pretty oh, unlucky on. for his wife. Yeah, his wife's sister is like, oh, I like that, and so his wife's sister oh, marries no. Jack. Oh no! <laughs> I see where you were going now. <laughs> so his wife's sister marries Jack because she's like, yeah, I want to be in on that. I yeah. like that, and I mean like. He's already sold a soul to the devil. Who cares? Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, like I know, I know everything now. Like I can't find anything else. Wait, that's she, worse wait. Than was this. she into Jack or was she into the cult? Both. <laughs> so she marries Jack. Whoa! She dives dives right into the cult life, um, the uh, the occult stuff. You know. Yeah. Um, they start living that life. Um, <laughs> this is bonkers. This took a hard left. <laughs> What's Edward it. Foreman doing this whole time? <laughs> uh, Edward and him are uh, after the whole cult, thing, the whole NASA thing. Okay, okay, okay. After the whole cult thing, pretty much everybody was like, oh, well, Jack, it, "That's what the other question." Was he still working for you know NASA Junior? Yeah, so he does for a while. He does for for quite while a while. he's doing the cult for stuff. quite a while. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I love this little crossover we're mm -hmm. doing. Mm -hmm. If you don't remember the, Al the Alistair <laughs> Crowley episode, uh, we're gonna play it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. And Satan. <laughs> uh, so, so, uh, uh, so he's doing the cult thing, right? He's Colton. He's Colton it up. Um, but there's this thing that he really wants to do, and it, it was the Babylon working spell, uh, which is something that Alistair Crowley had always dreamt, dreamt of. 
Um, basically, the concept is that there was this goddess of Babylon that when she returned, she gives birth to the Antichrist, and then everybody can have sex with whoever they want, and then we're going to go to space. Is the idea? Oh, um, yeah. So those were the two things. And I mean, <laughs> what more does Jack love <laughs> than the Antichrist in <laughs> <and> space? <laughs> He's Big like, this fan is, of space. This and is Satan. checking all my boxes. Two favorite S's. <laughs> and I can leave my wife behind. <laughs> Absolutely for her sister. So he's trying to get Aleister Crowley to do the spell with him. Crowley is like, I don't know about that. I don't know if we're there yet. I don't know if you're ready. <laughs> yeah, basically. And so uh, <laughs> he's like, no, come on. Like do that. Do that. That spell where we go to space though, bro. So Jack calls up one of his other good friends. And it's like, hey, who's I've got the other this good spell friend? that I want to do. Jose Canseco. Who's the like, other best? Like, who's the meet other good? Me in the desert. And so he drives out to the desert, and he waits for his friend to roll up to the desert with him to do the Babylon working spell. And out of whatever this would have been, like a forty-two Chevelle or something. I don't know. I made that part up, but I'm just painting the picture. Sure. Comes L. Ron Hubbard from Scientology. <laughs> Like the founder of Scientology. This is pre Scientology, though. <laughs> Bro, this guy's <laughs> spiritual life. He is connected to Aleister Crowley, L. Ron Hubbard, and Werner von Braun. And Satan. <laughs> <laughs> this guy knows everybody. <laughs> so well connected. His LinkedIn account. 666 connections. <laughs> what? So okay, so what what does Elron say? So they do it. They do the Babylon working spell. What uh, is the spell? Uh it's it's weird. Uh so there's some weird steps. Uh basically they they do some chants, they do some drawing on the desert, they do some weird sexual stuff. And then uh, uh, the Babylon mistress is supposed to come, right? She's supposed to show up. Yeah, she's supposed to show up. Well, after all this happens, Elron is like, "Hey, I've got this business venture." How high are they all the time? I mean, he's definitely addicted to drugs during this. Right, right, right. That's what I was saying. Um, and alcohol. Like he's very addicted to both. Um, Elron tells him, "Hey, I've got this new business, exciting new business adventure out yeah. in Florida. It's called uh, Scientology. <laughs> <laughs> it was a boating company. Like what? Bass Pro." Yes. Yeah. No. 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 Like a, like, like a tracker. Like a tracker boat company. Yeah. 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 Like he's gonna sell boats. Like make boats. Make boats. Sell boats. All that stuff. And he says. He says I'm looking for an investor. I'm looking for twenty thousand dollars to get this off the ground. Um. And Jack's like, Yeah, buddy. Like we just had a bond here with this whole Babylon working spell. How much is twenty thousand? Let me make 40s. you twenty thousand. Let me make hundred grand. Let me. Okay. Hold on. Uh, inflation calculator dot com. Uh, I can't believe that's not like a like a favorite like a bookmark. I know it needs to be. What is it? 1940 to today. The dollar amount is uh, 20,000. 20,000. Uh, 400,000. Oh my goodness. Uh, so just looking for a small investment <coughs> of, uh, of a lot, a lot of money. And so he's, he's like, he's like, you want to get in on this? And he's like, yeah, that sounds interesting. So uh, he invests $20,000 in L. Ron Hubbard's idea. Um, and then uh, he's like, all right, I'm going to go to Florida, get this started. And then I'll pay back your investment soon, basically. Well, on his way out, Elron Hubbard <laughs> picks up Jack Parsons' wife and takes him to Florida. Wife or sister? Well, wife, sister. The sister who's now his wife. Okay. So the new wife, wife. two. Wife two. Okay. Yeah. Picks up wife two. Wife two and is like, hey, you want to go to Florida with me? No. And she's like, yeah, sure. Uh, and they get married. No. <laughs> so she leaves him. So you're saying that, okay. He's like, bah, bro, <laughs> you got a great business idea. Boats love it. Love it. Here's all my money and you know, and this is gonna be great. And then he's like, great. Thank you for writing me a massive check <laughs> on the way out. By the way, what was your wife's name? <laughs> what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and they got married uh, and they were married for years. Um, Elron and what's her face? <laughs> that, yeah, that was her name. Did you go back to the sister at that point though? But like, hey, listen, things <laughs> hey, didn't work your out. Your sister left me. Yeah. For a cultist. For 
for a guy who's about to start a really no, good no, no, cult. No, no, I know you're mad. A different cultist, <laughs> like a different guy. It's a whole thing. Have you heard of Tillin Podcast merch? That's right. We have a merch store full of Tillin bread and teas, hoodies, mugs, and so much more. We also make new designs for every single episode, but those are only available for a limited time. So get them while they're hot. Text Tillin to six six eight six six to get your Tillin merch today. Um, <clears throat> so news started to to kind of disseminate through the government of all the stuff that Jack was into, and the FBI was like. Hey man, we don't like you doing this stuff anymore. Like you're too. Yeah, the like FBI we all would... worship Satan, but you're <laughs> too public about like, it. Listen, we all sold our souls. We get that part. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, you, one, two things. One, you're fired. Right? <laughs> two. What was your wife's name? <laughs> <laughs> like the FBI is going to marry your original <laughs> wife. Wife one man. So uh, luckily the, they were triplets, right? So uh, <laughs> separated at birth. <laughs> <laughs> so he went and found their other sister. What you know? What's he doing now? Not now, but what did he do after that? Uh, so after that, he uh, he gets fired um, and from the government. From the government, he has a lot of money left over. Yeah, blows through it pretty quick, uh, and then meets Marjorie Cameron, who was a movie star, um, and. Uh, they he believes that she is the Babylon goddess like he sees her. I he's like I summoned summoned you. you. (laughs) She's like excuse me. No, it was me and Elrond. Yeah, and she's like, oh, you know what? I do kind of I think I had a dream about that. No, stop. (laughs) So so they get married. Wait, does she go with it? I don't know. I mean, she ended up participating in all the Thelma stuff with him after. So that. she so was like, she was like, yes, I am the Babylonian princess. <laughs> she was like, how much money do you have? <laughs> That's what. Yeah. So I was just thinking if a rich person is yeah, like, I'm definitely the like princess. Uh, Babylon. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I prayed for you. <laughs> you prayed for me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, uh, you have how much money? <laughs> yeah, yeah, God works in mysterious ways. Sounds like a plan. Or sorry, Satan works in mysterious <laughs> ways. What are we like? So, so she's yeah. into the cult so stuff. he's still so he's still like and Alistair still in his life. Yeah, yeah, Alistair, still right? he, okay. he's still a priest at Thelma um, and so he still knows Alistair and whatever and so um, but then he meets this this actress and they hit it off. They get married um, and his wife number three. Yeah, his wife number three and she connects him with Hollywood and they're like, hey, we like to blow stuff up in our movies sometimes and we also love Satan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, also a big fan and so they started contracting him to be like the demolitions expert for a bunch of Hollywood movies. He didn't do a ton. There wasn't at that time that big of a need for him. Yeah, so he actually ended up blowing through most of his cash and ended up having to become an overnight um, gas station attendant and oh. so he was doing that, um, but he was also like I, Overnight is what I awed at. Like, yeah, yeah. He, here's, that's rough. He, he, here's what's interesting to me. Like, I mean, he definitely blew a lot of his money on drugs and alcohol during this point in his life. But also, like, he had he still had the mansion. The mansion was paid off, and so he was renting out rooms in his mansion. And then he was occasionally blowing stuff up on Hollywood sets. But he still had to work overnight at this gas station. I, I mean, I think the thing is, he just spent too much money on the drugs and alcohol. Yeah. Um, and he's sending a lot of money to Florida for boats. Yeah, he never got that money back from like, Man, I hope, you know, can't wait till that guy gives me my investment and my wife back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I invest. I expect a 13% return on my wife. Yes, please. Thank I you. I want a 13% better wife. Um, no, yeah. So, uh, yeah, he never got that money back. He actually sued L. Ron Hubbard and he lost. Um, he anything in writing. Well, I, mean, I was like, well, I mean, we like, wrote it. It was just in the sand in the desert. So I mean, like, you know, <laughs> if it's still out there, it's still out there. You can go check, you know? Um, yeah. So uh, uh, yeah, he, he lost that lost that money. And then at the age of 37, uh, he was preparing an explosive for a movie set. Um, I mean, at this point in his life, he's blown stuff up. He's only 37 at this point. Yeah, yeah. So this a lot of life has ha- packed into these 37 years. <laughs> Wait, does he die? So he's 37. He's in his garage. He's preparing this bomb for a movie set, um, mixing all these chemicals. Something very routine. He's done this thousands of times. Sure. And uh, drops it, and it explodes. 
um, he didn't die immediately. Uh, he but ended up he dying in the hospital. He ended up dying in the hospital. Um, uh, the police officer who first arrived on scene totally obliterated his house, uh, found him in the rubble. And Jack said these were these ended up being his last words. He said, I- I'm not done. Um, so I don't know what that was supposed to mean, but it sparked a conspiracy theory uh, that it wasn't an accident. So um, that it, the bomb like blowing up his house wasn't an accident. Yeah, so there's there's two. Oh, theories. there's a theory that he do it. He blew up his house to hide something. <clears throat> there's also a theory that someone else blew him up. Well, the hide something that's not a theory. Okay, uh, well, it is now. I just thought of it. <laughs> here we got a new theory. New theory does wrong. New so, theory. <laughs> so he here's the deal. If I can just blow up this house, he's then I'll get a new one. <laughs> Insurance fraud. Uh, so, <laughs> so <What> he, explosives. <laughs> so here's the deal. He's he's an expert. What's, what's your explosion <laughs> coverage? Insure, yeah, what's your coverage? <laughs> I mean, I I think if my house blows up, I'm fully covered. I think. I should yeah. double check with my insurance. You should probably call your insurance. Hey, agent. random question. Yeah. If my we house were to just because we've seen blow it. up. Uh, <laughs> whatever those commercials are, <laughs> we've seen it, so we cover it. <laughs> Uh, so uh, uh, the theory goes, uh, he he was an expert with this stuff. Yeah, and so and especially with how the bombs would, he was how making, something so routine. Yeah, and he's only thirty seven, so it's not like yeah. he's like to the point where he's like. But I mean, let's let's look at his life. It's not like he had not a, not. I don't want to say like he had a lot to live for. Yeah, but like he's on wife number three. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's involved in a series called drug addicted, alcohol addicted. Still hasn't been to space. Here's the question. Let's go back to to wife number two for a second. He's Uh, married to the sister. Did he just not care about Christmas or like Thanksgiving? Did they go (laughs) still? You know, (laughs) I was just thinking about what? (laughs) Yeah, I think when you marry your ex wife's sister, you pretty much put to rest having in laws like you're just like, yeah, all of that side of, but what would be worse is what if the exist. what if the in laws were all for it? What if the parents <laughs> were like, oh yeah, that was we that's a great that. match when we met great you. Match. We were like, he's we were better. Like, she is way more into cults than her. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> she has always yeah, been a yeah. little culty. You know what? When I was 10, when she was 10, I found her in her room she was calling t- on the devil signing with blood <laughs> that if she could join a cult, she would just serve him forever. She used to just it with her own blood right on our wall space. Over over and over again, like and just <laughs> like she probably wrote it a hundred times. Do? What do you do? Space. space. What, what, do, you, know what, what do you meant. do if you walk in your kid's room and they are writing in their own blood on the walls? <laughs> it doesn't matter what they're writing. Matter what, they're what, writing. They're writing. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> What's your first response? It's probably like one of those like. Uh, and that, then what if the words are "I'm not done"? Then what do you do? <laughs> You move and you leave yeah, that you kid. Move, you leave the you, kid. You lock the door. You do the thing where you move away door. and you leave the kid on the front porch for whatever <laughs> family moves in. All right. This is the house's child now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a, a beautiful uh, uh, bicentennial home. It was built in 1933. It comes uh, with this haunted child. Yeah, three bedroom, two bathroom, 1900 square feet. Uh, Seven year old girl, <laughs> uh, and the kitchen is newly updated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a quick recommendation: the walls are all painted red, and you we should just leave them that like way. That. Yeah, you don't want to see. It's easier. It's easier. You don't want to see. You don't want to see. It helps everything blend in a little better. <laughs> That's the house's child. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> you don't want to see. I don't like that at all. Oh my gosh. What do you do? Yeah, anyway. Yeah, that's rough, man. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so at 37, he blows up doing blows something up. routine. So the two theories are, are that it was a suicide, which <sighs> a lot of people don't buy that because he said, I'm not done. Yeah. Um, and plus, like, I mean, you but can also, kinda you can kind of find a motive. Like he's okay. like you said, he's on his third wife. He lost his dream job. He hasn't been to space yet. He sold his soul to the devil. Oh, he never got he's, to go to space. That's right. Yeah, I guess yeah. I just assumed he was going to space with all the stuff. 
Mm-mm. Um, the other theory is that somebody needed him Killed gone. Him. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of different theories on who that could be. There's the CIA. There's people at NASA. There's people within Thelema. There's people like L. Ron Hubbard. There's a theory. There was actually a. This is weird. Um, there's a seven year old girl in the house. <laughs> Lots of people wanted him dead. <laughs> there was a cop um, who uh, was convicted of murdering someone by blowing them up um, and they brought him in to testify to say hey, we think this is how he did it. Is that possible? They're like he was the bomb expert and he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, he definitely did that and then he went to prison and so then oh, he spent years in you're prison. saying they brought in uh, yeah, they brought Jack in Parsons Jack Parsons to testify against the police officer. Yeah, and then he got released from prison. Yeah, when he and got then released, was like, "I'll show you what's you possible." Yeah, yeah, and so, so he tampered with his bomb as he was making it, so it blew blew him up. Interesting. Um, so there's lots of theories on who has the motive. Honestly, a lot of people had motive to kill him, um, <clears throat> and so there's all these theories about it. But um, I guess we'll never know. What we do know that's <laughs> very strange. Um, shortly after his death, he died in 1952. Um, following that was uh, the space race and the 60s, which were two very interesting times because one, we got to space, the moon. Okay, I mean, if you believe that, allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, um, and then two, there was like this, the hippie movement. It was very sexually liberating, and so if he just people, made it eight more years, some people say like they were like his Babylon thing actually worked, like. His little Babylon call magic trick thing. So he had to sacrifice himself <laughs> to get there. Maybe that was the last part of the spell. Maybe know. that's what he meant by I'm not done. Oh, <laughs> Jack Parsons reincarnated as, as the 60s. What are you talking about? <laughs> as the literal <laughs> as the 60s. <laughs> you guys are going to love it when I'm gone. <laughs> that's not <laughs> that's not what I was going to say. Um, no, I was going to say he reincarnated as Neil Armstrong. Oh, <laughs> but <laughs> I like your idea better. Timeline wouldn't have worked out, <laughs> I don't think. Yeah, I mean, he probably just possessed him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to space one way or another. <laughs> he's like, he's like, Satan, you can work that out, right? Yeah. Uh, so Satan's like, that's one small step for <laughs> me. <laughs> for me, <laughs> Satan. Satan. He always <laughs> calls himself that too. He goes, "Yeah, I guess I, Satan, could figure that out." And you're like, "Dude, I, uh, how you many times you got to say do the that? name every time?" What do you mean, I, I Satan, Satan, am not doing anything? <laughs> like he's always referring to himself. <laughs> I, comma, Satan. Call Satan. I just want to be clear who I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, <laughs> who uh, I, Satan, am talking yeah. about? If you say I, I'm assuming you're talking about yourself, Satan. You, yourself, comma, Satan. <laughs> Right, and that's <laughs> I, Satan, am talking about myself, <laughs> Satan, and uh, so. Anyways, Jack Parsons, he really did contribute a ton to the world of rocket science. Yeah. Um, I mean, NASA probably would have eventually happened, but it it was founded because he was blowing stuff up in the desert. Yeah, uh, really, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Uh, and and a lot of the stuff he did, like it ended up. Like it propelled the whole thing forward. Sure, um, he was the foundation. <laughs> I of see it. what he did. Yeah, um, Werner von Braun stole his glory. Right, um, but uh, I mean, he he also did kind of give his glory away from the whole cult thing. Well, but and hold on, 1952 is around the same time that not around the same time, but Werner von Braun, Ver, Verber von Braun, Ver, Werner von Braun, Werner von Braun. Whatever, I can't say it. Uh, he had. When did he come over? To when was, like Operation Paperclip? They took him what, in the in the forties, right? Yeah, it would have been like mid forties. So, so then he, he's there for a few years. He arrived in nineteen forty five. Right. So he's there. Years he's years working his with him, and then just cuts him well, out. I think he was fired before Werner von Braun got there. Hold on, let me double check. I'm pretty sure he did. And I mean, he wasn't working on the side. They were meeting in the desert, dude. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, they were calling. They were but, calling each other before. I mean, a short life, but he's in a worse place now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know if because Satan didn't hold up his end of the deal. You know? Yeah, yeah. He didn't. He didn't. He's like, ah, well, I mean, 
Yeah. Yeah. At the end, that's that's where he was. He was telling God. He's like, God, I mean, like, yeah, the I made a deal was, with the devil. He didn't keep his side. He didn't uphold. Can you believe this guy? He's like, he's can like, God. you believe the devil wasn't <laughs> trustworthy? <laughs> he's like, God, here's the deal. Here's the deal. If either my deal with the devil is null and void, <clears throat> and so I need my eternal life in heaven back, right? Or I want my twenty thousand dollars from L. Ron Hubbard. You choose which deal you want to uphold, but yeah. I want one of them upheld. Yeah, he's like he's in court. <laughs> yeah, he's in God's court. He's up there just <laughs> <laughs> it's like divorce court, but it's God's court. All rise for the Lord of the universe. <laughs> what is the song? Oh man, I can't do it. Better is one day <laughs> in your court. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, so um yeah, it's crazy. The guy, I mean, the people that's how NASA to, started. That's pretty yeah, bonkers. And, and he connected that uh, Alistair Crowley was like doing cult stuff with L. Ron Hubbard before Scientology. Um, really, honestly, his investment started uh, L. Ron Hubbard's boating company, which is the company that became the C. What do they call that? C. Are you familiar with Scientology? Scientology. No, they did hand me a pamphlet C, downtown Kansas City last night. Though. The C Org. So the, the C Org. That's where they train all their like high level operatives, and it's on a yacht that like travels on the ocean. So that way, it's not in control. It's it's international waters. They oh, can maybe, do whatever they maybe want. Maybe we should do an episode about Scientology because I I don't know anything about it. Yeah, it's interesting. But other that than was, the fact that if you fill out the form, <laughs> if you take their little personality test mm -hmm. and the, and you give them your information, they will not leave you alone. Yeah, yeah. Like ever. So then. So then you have um, he basically founded Scientology because the Sea Org happened through that boating company. So he funded Scientology essentially. So the things that this guy was a part of is kind of and bonkers. he's not done and he's not done <laughs> pretty crazy. So um, and God was like, listen, the deal is done and void, All right? <laughs> There's only one thing left you can do. Put a band aid on those bloody hands and get over here and fiddle off with the devil. Hey, thanks for watching Things I Learned Last Night. If you like this episode, you can watch more right here or you can watch some highlights. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. It helps us out a lot. Also, leave a comment below and we'll see you next week. <laughs>